Greetings and welcome back to yet another episode of The Binding of Isaac Repentance and today I'm gonna lead you into the realm of challenge runs and we're gonna do a repentance challenge run obviously I'm not gonna do another old one just because I'm not on a time limit it's Saturday I have as much time as you want uh, and I was thinking of doing Isaac's Awakening I tried it a little bit before uh, when I was doing some test runs just to see what would be a good fit for the video and it's 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 just seems like a genuinely interesting little challenge. We're playing as Isaac with uh, one of the new items which I haven't seen before, which is a blade uh, that's eerily reminiscent of, of of a character that you might be familiar with, but with another name, and that's Link. Uh, also an Isaac clone, if you haven't heard about it. No, I'm just kidding, obviously, if you don't know uh, Legend of Zelda, first of all, are you living under a rock? And second of all, it's, it's a game that was originally on the Nintendo Entertainment System, I believe, and now is one of the biggest gaming franchises. Uh, maybe not the biggest, uh, maybe not even one of the biggest, but it's pretty big. Uh, it's definitely very influential, and it's Binding of Isaac was actually partly inspired by that. Uh, the whole dungeon crawling aspect, uh, the bi-directional, I mean the four-directional shooting, etc. That's, I believe, all from Zelda. The biggest difference in, in Zelda and Isaac, of course, is not the fact that um, you're a little boy crying. Uh, I mean, that is the biggest difference. You're a little boy crying in Legend of Zelda. You're a hero with a master sword uh, going around slaying demons and monsters trying to save your kingdom and your princess, I believe, which is Zelda. So, actually, the titular character, character of the series is not even mentioned in the title as opposed to The Binding of Isaac. So, I guess that's another huge difference between the two uh, video games. But yeah, um, I do have a confession to make saying that I've never really played a Legend of Zelda game. It's... I know. It's it's, it's shocking. It's... Uh, like, what are you doing with your life? It's just... You, you call yourself a gamer and you haven't even tried it. Um, and I mean, the reason for that is that Le Legend of Zelda games were usually exclusive to Nintendo cons consoles. And I had one, to be fair, I had a Nintendo Entertainment System that was way back in the day. And it's it's just um, I mean I just didn't have the game I guess uh, now I, I do have to say that the console I had was I'm pretty sure it was an original uh, it was it was a fake or, or like a, I, I mean I don't know how to, how to put it like it was a counterfeit <laughs> Nintendo Entertainment System and I know I, it did like the original cartridges did work on it because I know I had some of the originals but I also had a lot of fake cartridges which were I believe like pi pirated copies of the game. Um, which, maybe I shouldn't admit this, but this happened like 15 years ago, I was a child, I had no idea what I was doing, I didn't even know it was illegal, so... You know, it's it, it's just history at this point. Um, um, but I, I, like, I, I'm not even sure about the availability of the console in Slovenia, where I was from when I was a kid at that age. Uh, maybe it was an old console at that point already, like, I'm just actually not sure. <laughs> uh, so the charger jacks needs to do a lot of damage, so I'll just keep doing that. Nice. Nice. Uh, so yeah, I haven't played it, and it's 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 uh, it's a shame, in a sense. But now, because I'm an adult, I actually ended up buying a Switch. Now I'm playing Mario Odyssey, which is another game franchise which I've missed out on for the past 20 years. <laughs> I've only played the original Mario uh, Brothers, Super Mario Bros, and then I haven't played another Mario game since then. And it's, it's quite a shame. But now I'm playing Mario Odyssey. I'm having a great time. It's it's a fantastic game in many regards. Um, I didn't expect it to be so collect -a -tonic. It's literally you just run around as Mario collecting not even shrooms, uh, but like moons. Which, again, don't know what that has to do with Mario. But hey, it's I'm here for it. It's it's a fun little bit. Um, it's a very easy game to pick up and put down, so that, that's that's probably one of my favorite things about it, because it's 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 a console, like it's a Switch game, uh, so I'm not near the TV all the time, like I am in front of my computer, and now obviously I'm playing Isaac, so there's just naturally less time for other games, because um, this it's a I would say the majority of my free time schedule right now. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I'm having a great time with Isaac, with Mario Odyssey, looking forward to trying Breath of the Wild eventually, uh, that's definitely on the menu, it's considered to be by many one of the greatest games maybe of all time, and I don't want to miss out on the opportunity to play that, if that's even remotely true, and I don't know why it wouldn't be, considering that Nintendo generally makes pretty solid games. Okay, let's just go to the next floor. Uh, I have another 
let, let me say, I, I have a repentance of my own to make. <laughs> I need to repent, because yesterday I said there are no good uh, time travel movies. And that's just not true, because as long as, uh, as long as Back to the Future exists, there will be good time travel movies. Maybe I would say Back to the Future is the quintessential time travel movie. And the main reason that movie is successful, I, I think, as a time travel movie is because the, the rules of time travel don't really make sense. And it doesn't pretend for it to make sense. It just builds a fun concept on top of what already exists. And because of that, I think that's what allowed it to succeed. Like, it's not a time travel movie first. It's a primarily a comedy adventure film, right? And that's what makes it um, good, I think. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that, well, that was my mistake. I said it out loud. Uh, it's on the record. I'm now amending my mistake. It's on the record. So now nobody can come after me and say, well, how about Back to the Future? I'm interested to pick up my reflection just to see how this works. It works as you'd expect it to. That's pretty freaking cool. <laughs> hmm. Okay. So the challenge goes to... I believe that is Mother. Okay, so this goes pretty far, <laughs> which means that we need to get a strong run going, because if we want to succeed... It, it, it does seem like uh, my reflection actually increased the range of my blade swing by quite a lot, and that's nice. I, I, have, I have to say, I have a thing for good strong melee weapons. They're just so satisfying to use, especially when they're balanced in this sense where if you charge it up, you deal a ton of damage and you can just enter a room and literally just destroy everything in your sight. And then, of course, you're like, oh, how am I going to beat the boss? There's a little bit of a struggle there, but I do feel like this is a pretty powerful weapon. Maybe I put that a little bit too far up. That's fine. Um, so another thing I wanted to mention was my active item, which is something that I don't think we've seen before on YouTube, but it's Mom's Bracelet. Essentially, it's it just allows you to pick up stuff and throw them, like rocks. You might have seen me do it like this. And then you can throw them at the enemy, and that does deal a, pr a pretty significant chunk of damage, actually. So, if you encounter it, I feel like it's a great early game weapon, especially if you don't have a lot of damage. Because uh, a lot of rooms have rocks, if you throw like a bomb rock, it even explodes, so it's just a great little tool all around. And it's fitting. I don't know if Link in Legend of Zelda actually has uh, the ability to throw rocks. Um, if he does, that's very thematic. If he doesn't, then... I guess it's not. I know he can like pick stuff up above his head. Maybe that's what they were going for. But I'm not sure if that's a rock type situation. Whatever that means. <laughs> wow. Okay, so that wasn't too hard. Uh, so Mother, I, I, I haven't pl tried to beat in her too many times. So only a few, a couple of times. So I'm not sure how well this is gonna go. But I'll, I'll, I will do, I will try my best. I will do my best, I'll try. Oh, wait, considering I need to go to Mother, I need uh, the knife piece. <laughs> Obviously, I just wanted to leave. This is the second floor, yeah, yeah, okay. I was so excited talking about her, but then I wouldn't even be able to get to her, because I didn't. <laughs> I wouldn't have the knife piece. I, I mean, I assume considering it's a challenge, it, I, I feel like if it's a challenge, it should just give you the knife piece, just in case if you don't know what exactly you're doing, but... Hey, whatever. We'll just do it, we'll just do it ourselves. Yeah, it's, it's fine. Um, I was also thinking, I don't utilize curse rooms enough on, this, on these floors, and they should be pretty easy to utilize considering that you have Holy Mantle and you can enter them for free because of light, and then in the other direction, uh, you don't really need... Uh, in the other direction, you can just use your Holy Mantle not to get hit and damaged and, and die. Uh, so, so I'm thinking that if I don't get hit, I'll actually try it. Obviously, there's a problem. There's like enemies inside and they end up hitting you. Because then when you walk out, you just get hit again and it doesn't end well for anybody. But <laughs> Okay. Perfect. This seems like it's... This shouldn't be too difficult. I don't know how that didn't hit. That's fine. So, I'm it's gonna charge you. Okay. Nice. And Synth Oil. So, we got Synth Oil and the purple thing. Growth Hormones. So, that's big. I get another one and we have the sponge transformation. 
That's fantastic, actually. And I feel like if I was designing the game, I would make the costumes be really good in the mirror world. <laughs> So I'm gonna be saying, why didn't you pop the pill there? Well, because it was if it was something like bad trip, then I'd end up dying on my exit. And I've I've played this game too long to know that you don't use pills inside curse rooms. Maybe secret rooms, because then maybe they can explode a door in, or an opening, or maybe a boss, because then you get something. But never a curse room, especially if you're at the risk of dying <laughs> when you exit it. So that's my, my advice for you today, I suppose. Don't use pills inside ghost rooms, even though they're good. All right, so I was thinking, today is Saturday. I'm having a nice, nice little, uh, nice little morning. Uh, oh, he here's, here's another, like, here's some unsolicited health advice again. Uh, hopefully it won't be too much, but so I've been dealing with what's, uh, what's called a brain fog. And if you're not sure, like, what it is, it's, it's just, I mean, it just is what it sounds like. You're just kind of permanently confused. And ever since I had a migraine, I, I was dealing with this, like, weird brain fog. And it was, it kind of made it not good to, 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 to be alive. <laughs> uh, not in the, in, the, in the depressing sense, but it was just, like, hard to focus on anything. Uh, obviously, I still did, and to an extent, I still do. Like no matter what uh, happens, right? But it's just like a struggle, and and I was googling like, and apparently some of that can be caused by a vitamin B12 deficiency. And if you're someone struggling with a similar problem, and maybe you've been looking for a solution, and you're not sure what exactly, like maybe a good good thing to try would be a vitamin B12 because it's readily available. It's not too expensive. I feel like it's worth a shot. You pop like a pill. They taste like cherries. <laughs> I got them yesterday, and I had to say that today I feel a lot better, like I feel like my brain is actually on again, uh, as opposed to being permanently off, as it does feel with brain fog. So if, if you're if you're, if you're there, here's, here's, here's a health tip, and hopefully, you know, maybe this reaches someone and I've done my job, um, and now I'll, I'll get out of here, because this is not a video about that, I just, I'm just trying to say that I feel a lot better than I did yesterday, and I'm very excited about it. And if the solution is as simple as as a little bit of vitamin B12 in my at my side, then that's great. <laughs> so I don't know. Oh, oh, I did bomb flies. For some reason, I thought they were chasing them and not me. That was obviously my bad. So I was thinking, like, I don't even have to get close to him. I can just throw bombs permanently, and I feel like they're, they're gonna do all the damage for me. Spawn! That's great. Oh, hmm. Okay, so I will take holy water, because it kind of freezes enemies on contact. And the holy water itself, like, the, the water part, does do, do quite a significant amount of damage. Um, I was also thinking, like, I was, I was I was playing the lemon challenge, and lemon party seems to have been nerfed. Like, it deals less damage than before, which is a surprising nerf to be sure, because it wasn't even very good, like even before. <laughs> uh, but now I guess that uh, holy water fits that spot. Like, it deals a ton of damage, uh, and especially because it freezes enemies as well. It, they don't go anywhere, and you're just able to. It's just able to to do a constant amount of damage to them, and you can just kind of hack away with them, uh, add them with your sword. So it's good in that regard. Also looking for a secret room, which might be this. It is. Uh, obviously, you have to try this. What happens with the hookworm? I just assume. Well, doesn't work. Okay, maybe for the best. Wait, I can pick things up with my sword? That's so cool, I just noticed this. When I swung over the coin, it actually put it uh, in my inventory. Nice. Uh, okay, that's it. On to the next floor and to face uh, this the mom, mom spirit chasing me through the mines. Just, just deal with these guys. Uh, I don't wanna. Okay, step on the button. I've, I, I've been thinking about some of these new enemies a lot, and and I do feel like some are a little bit too difficult to dodge. 
Not, not in the sense that, again, maybe maybe it's just like some room variations, uh, but especially rooms we don't have a lot of uh, space to work with. Uh, obviously not these boneflies, these boneflies are no problem, but uh, for example, the, 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 the floating heads which bounce around, or there was a room, I, th I think it was on video as well, which was super small and had one of the super tanky enemies while going up uh, for the secret ending. And that, that felt bad, because it was such a small room, that you just had no place to go. You, like, you had no room to go, and because the enemy was so tanky, it took forever to actually deal damage. So, I'm interested in seeing how they approach rebalancing some of those rooms. Uh, they did mention they're rebalancing the game right now, obviously fixing a lot of bugs. Uh, but it does feel like there are still a couple of rooms which made me feel a little unfair. But I always, I also question myself, like, how much of that is inherently Isaac's design? Like, the, the ability, the fact that you just have to be okay with getting hit sometimes? Because I feel like a part of the challenge is not only dodging everything, but saving enough health for, let's say, a tough boss or a tough enemy where you can afford to get hit a couple of times without losing the run. He eats my sword. That's... Uh, I really like this boss. Mainly because it's not that hard. <laughs> uh, yeah, I noticed also that the, the flies, these flies, they have their eyes open or closed. And if they have closed eyes, they shoot diagonally. Oh. Okay. Swing it. Oh, I didn't even see the... <laughs> Okay, I literally, I forget that I have a shield and I can just walk through it. But again, see, see like, just the pattern of the room made it very hard not to get hit there. I, I should be able to, like, throw a rock or something at him. Or even a bomb. Um, I've said this before, but I feel like bombs are going to be super useful now. Sensor is just an excellent item, I think. It slows bullets down around you, and it's fantastic. Okay. Um... So let me give you some more anecdotes. I, I, I'm like I, I'm I'm in a very like chill mood today. I'm just enjoying the game, so I'm, I'm being a little bit more quiet than usual, which uh, maybe suits some people, maybe doesn't suit others. Uh, but I'm feeling it. I'm just having a really nice time. Uh, I placed that guy because I thought it was going to be the other judgment, <laughs> this one, uh, and I was like I'm, I'm gonna blow him up. But then I remembered I could just like donate some money to him. See, you get a health up, just give some money to a, to a beggar, you get uh, some food for the street, and that's it. Talking about beggars. <clears throat> now, this is this is, this is is my opportunity to, to share some stories with you, because we've all, we've all had encounters with people who, like, beg for money, right? Uh, I, would, I would assume most people do, at least. Oh, I can't pick that up, that's a shame. Okay, so th th this is how you do this, right? You take this, you pop it, you pick up as many books as you can, because they give you uh, the transformation, and you take take back your mom's bracelet. And honestly, at this point, Book of Shadows might just be a lot better than mom's bracelet. So let me do th this again, and, and uh, go back. No reason why I put it back, because, like I said, Book of Shadows is just predominantly better than mom's bracelet. <laughs> uh, it's just a little funny thing. Uh, but yeah, we've all, we've all had experiences with people who, who ask for money, uh, like out in the streets. And it's always such an uncomfortable situation, because they come up to you. And usually, like, with me, for me, the problem is not so much that, like, I would be reluctant to give someone money. Like, if they needed more than I do, if they asked me for it, like, it's fine. Like, here, here's, like, five bucks or whatever. Like, it's, it's cool. Or euros. I don't, we don't use bucks, we have euros. Like, here's five euros or whatever. Or even, like, a coin, like a two-euro coin. Like, just take it, man. Just, you know... Buy yourself something nice. Um, but what ends up happening, like, usually, like, it always happens when you're in the middle of something, I find. Like, like you're just about to get on a bus and then someone stops you and asks for money. And it's, uh, that's what makes it <laughs> a little bit uncomfortable. Because it's like, I want to be polite and let this person know that, um... I want to let this person know that I'm busy right now, but at the same time, I don't want to seem insensitive, and it's... Oops, <laughs> that bounced back. That's my bad. I don't want to seem insensitive, or they're like... Uh, they, they come up to you, and they, they... Like, you have a friend with you, or something like that. And it's also, again, uh, just a little bit... 
like uncomfortable because it's like oh yeah, yeah I'm in the middle of the conversation like who, which person do I focus on, etc. etc. Right. Uh, this is especially true with someone with someone who's like an inspiring like who's trying to sell you something, not just ask you for money. Uh, like it feels even worse because at that point you're you're bart bartering without agreeing to barter with someone in the first place, and they're like, hey, buy this. And you're like, ah, I don't, I'm not actually interested in this. And they're like, I, I'll give it to you for five euros. And it's like, I, I don't need it. And it's like, three euros. It's like, I, <laughs> you're missing the point. I, I do not want to give my money in exchange for this good that you're offering. And they're like, ah, fine. You drive a hard back his for a euro. Uh, I, I've, ne I've never seen it go that far, but I can imagine it. Because they're just trying to get it out, out, of, out of their system and just into your hand. And they, like, just get some money back. Um... But go gosh, like it's 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 one of those socially uncomfortable constructs, uh, and and I think for me at least it's mostly because it's like a stranger coming up to you and expecting a, a response of some type. Uh, not so much the fact that they're like asking for money. Like I, I'm not worried about money. Like I'll give my money to uh, pretty much anyone who asks for it. <laughs> like this is this is a cool boss. Like let me just say it out loud. I don't know its patterns yet, but the first time I've seen it. But it's dead already, because I'm too powerful for this world. Ooh. I mean, this seems like an interesting little item. Because if I get Brimstone with this, I mean, I have to try it, at least. Okay, so it doesn't work with Brimstone. See, this is what I'm talking about, like... Why do items just not work with Brimstone? That's so disappointing. It didn't even give me a damage upgrade. So it was just... I just wasted one red heart. <laughs> That's fine. Again, it's a minor thing. But like at least Brimstone. Like with these new cool items. Or maybe like we're... Lo maybe because it's a challenge run. I mean, I don't see why that would affect it. But um, maybe they disabled synergies for challenge runs. Because like if you get a broken combination. Then maybe you, you end up being a little bit too powerful. Um, but obviously, again, like with every single item you add, there's an exponentially more synergies you have to put in the game. So it's very understandable that not all of the synergies are in there, especially for the super rare items. Because uh, it's just like economically doesn't really make a lot of sense from a time standpoint. You have to invest so much time into creating every individual synergy. Um, but we were talking about uncomfortable social situations and... Uh, I have to say that to an extent, like when you're working in a public setting like a classroom, you kind of get over a lot of the awkwardness of, of being stuck in those positions. I, I feel like at least. Uh, maybe that's not true for everybody, but it's true for me. Uh, but still, there are some moments which definitely can catch me off guard. Uh, and primarily, it's just whenever something unexpected happens. Like, I feel like I'm a pretty good conversationalist. I can talk to pretty much anyone at any point i can bring up any topic like you might be interested in literally like i'll just discuss it i'm just open i'm i feel like um i can talk about a lot of different topics you know i have the the skills that are required to be a good conversationalist and i don't i'm not shy like i'm i'm very like i said i'm open and it's it's in that regard i feel like i have a lot of going for me but as soon as someone like if I happen to be upon a conversation I didn't expect I'm gonna have, I just my mind just goes blank. I just I just shut down. Like this happened a couple of times to me. For some reason, people really like to point out you have a cool new phone. Uh, like when I had like my Samsung Galaxy S8, I bought it because I was just replacing my old phone. I don't really care about phones. Like let me be honest. I I mean I use my phone a lot. I mean we all do because we're all addicted to our phones. Uh, but. When I got it, right, it was just, like, more of a replacement. It's not... I don't really, like, place a lot of value on having a brand new phone. Like, as long as it works, I'm okay with it. Uh, but then I was, like, buying a new one. I was in the market for it. I was like, sure, you know, I'm gonna buy something that's hopefully gonna last me as long as it can. Um, and if you buy an old model at that point, you know, what are the odds of, of it surviving past winter? And I would say not very large. <laughs> um... So, so yeah, I bought, I bought the Samsung Galaxy S8 when it was new, and then people, like, literally, like, it happened two or three times. They just stopped me on the streets to say, wow, that's a cool new phone. I was like, what? Like, I never realized people care this much about having a new phone, to the point where you would stop a complete stranger to tell them that they have a cool phone. It's just, 
that's just insane to me, honestly. <laughs> um, and then I even remember one person was like, hey, you have a cool new phone, like, mind if I touch it? It's like, I mind, I absolutely mind if you touch it. But, but like, at that point when they ask you, like, when they ask me specifically, like, do you like your new phone? I'm just like, yeah. <laughs> I, and that that's where the story ends and begins like I have nothing else to add like why do you like it? I can't I can't disclose that information. I'm <laughs> I'm um, I'm not privy to, to such uh, Secrets I guess I just realized that maybe I won't have book of shadows for for the mother fight, but hey, that's fine. Oh This is just the boss room of course um, I could do it actually with Book of Shadows, it wouldn't be too difficult. I just realized, why is it open if we're past the 20 minute mark? Huh. Maybe it opens always if you go this path? Oh my god, they bounce the bullets back. That's so cool. <laughs> Mom's sorry, you never stood a chance. Mind if you, if you light your phone, Mom's sorry? <laughs> I know I'm being a little salty, but... Like, you don't just walk up to a person and say, hey, I want to touch your phone. Like, you just don't do that. Just leave my phone out of this. Right, we have the corpse floor in front of us. I thought this anecdote is going to have to come to an end soon, but apparently we have... It has a little bit more staying power thanks to the floor layouts. Because <laughs> I really forgot about this. I thought we, we have the mother fight next. It just makes sense, right? Fight it after mom and mom's heart. But yeah, like, it just it just... I would say turn me off the whole idea of getting a new phone because like if people are like a strangers This is a really good item. I've, I've had it before. It basically turns you can take a boat That's amazing. So binge eater not only does it increase all your stats, which is amazing It also makes it so that every single item you find uh, Can turn into a food item and basically they alternate so you always have a choice and that's so good because it, it like it just gives you more power, not power, uh, it gives you... What was I trying to say? It gives you more health, that's that's like, I, I just blanked on that one. And every time you pick a health upgrade, you gain a little bit of a damage upgrade. And then that damage upgrade actually decreases, so... The fact is you kind of always have to pick up health upgrades if you want to keep it up, but... Uh, as long as the health upgrades are likely, like it's, it's, it's just a damage upgrade, I think, on all fronts. And also, like, you get a ton of health for free. So, it's it's literally, I would say, one of the best new items that got added in the game that I've discovered so far. Obviously, it's in the secret room pool, which makes it a little bit harder to find, but... Still, just a fantastic item overall, I have to say. Here we're going. Oh, there's the library. You'll see what I'm saying? Like, it's... Half of it is food, and I can just literally take all of it. And I see no reason not to, honestly. So I will. <laughs> and then, uh, see, as, as soon as I took it, as soon as I take a health upgrade, I get a damage increase, which decreases over time. Uh, to be fair, but... You know what? I'll leave one spirit heart. The rest is gonna be red health. This is my decision. I've made it. This is the way, as, as <laughs> Mandalorian would say. So what are you? I think I've seen you before, but I'll be damned if I remember what you do. <laughs> okay, so that was that was a very doable dodge. It was just yeah, my bad. Uh, okay, big shame. So just two health upgrades, no matter what. That's fair. I have the lovers too, so I can use it. I I'm saving actually both charges of Booker Shadows for the mother fight, because that's gonna be easily the most difficult. And up until that point, I can just restore it, my health with more health upgrades. Because now every single health upgrade, like the snacks, the dinner, etc., et also restores a, bit, restores a bit of your existing health um, instead of just giving you a new heart container. So that's so good. I feel like this is a one run on the basis of having everything I need. <laughs> So where, where's the... Oh, there's the maggot. Hello. Uh, so my advice is, if you're gonna be a person who walks up to a stranger to ask uh, how they like their phone, uh, I I'm, I don't mind it. I, I Like I said, I don't mind talking to strangers. It's just... 
I have concrete questions prepared. Pretend you're asking someone like like you would ask them for a grade. Maybe that's not too relatable to most people, but <laughs> like if, if you gave someone an oral exam, that, that's how you should approach it. Like expect the person not to know the answer ahead of time. So like just, just help them a little bit. Cause like if you're, oh, the sun just heals everything I have. Okay, this is definitely a one run. <laughs> Uh, give the people every chance to make them feel comfortable. Like if you're the person in engaging or initiating the conversation, it's kind of your job to to make the conversation feel. I don't have a sword. Okay, here it is. Uh, it's kind of your job to make the conversation flow, right? No, that that expectation is not upon the person you're addressing. <laughs> and I hope you make. I hope that's clear. I I don't think that's too clear for many people. Like if you just walk up to someone, you're like, hey, what's up? And then you expect the other person to be the, the engaging one. Like that's not how it works. You should you should be the one to engage. You should be the one to ask follow-up questions. So like in this case, you're interested about the phone. You're like, hey man, like I saw your phone. I was I was thinking of buying it, but I'm not too sure. And like I don't know anybody who has it. Do you mind if I ask you a couple of questions? And like sure, like yeah. You know, like give me some time to prepare. Like with, with that leading question, I have time to understand like process what's going on. Then you're like, well, I was interested, like, how's the battery life like? Uh, is the camera any good? Like, you're satisfied with the overall experience, blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, we can start talking. But if you're just like, hey, cool phone, what did you do? It's like, I cannot help you. <laughs> it's, this is too much, too quickly. I don't like, it's like a date, right? You have to lube it up. I mean, lube it up in, in the sense that you have to approach it in a gentle way first, and then you can, like, commit. But at the start, just like have some freaking decency, man. Like, give me, give me the the space of time. Like especially if like I'm doing something on the phone. Again, I don't mind if you people interrupt me while I'm on the phone. But like if I'm doing something, like I'm already thinking about something completely different. I'm not gonna be able to context switch uh, on your command, and especially if you touch my phone. Like that, th that's always a no-no. No matter how much rapport we establish, don't touch my phone. <laughs> I hope, again, that's self-evident, but again, considering it happened once, I don't think it is to a lot of people, so. So, mother, <laughs> we're just uh, fighting her. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to damage her arms, because I see that they have different hitboxes, or if I'm supposed to. Okay, so it doesn't matter, apparently, whatever you damage. The squiggly lines, definitely hard, but with sensor, they seem doable. Okay. I don't know how I missed that. When you swing the sword, it kind of bounces you back and it makes it harder to dodge. So when that thing comes, you just run to the opposite side of the... And when she does this, just go behind her. <laughs> Utilize the whole arena, that's what seems to be the key here. Okay, okay. Uh-huh, she goes from the same side. So, the ideal spot to be is in the center, I think, right? Sensor is not making this any easier, by the way. Like, we just... The sword, however, is, is doing a stellar job. I... Like, if she hits you on one side, then she's gonna come from... <laughs> It's, it's just like the brain juice is not uh, potent. So yeah, just go on the same side you were in. That's, that's, that's how it goes. She always goes on opposite sides. Nice, okay. Uh, I did think it was a one round for a second there when I actually had to pop my sun card. I was a little bit afraid, uh, but we got through it. So hopefully, you enjoyed this run, it was a little bit more chill, I was a little bit more relaxed, it's a Saturday, so don't expect too much from me. <laughs> um, we did the challenge, it was fun, hopefully, like I said, you enjoyed it, and if nothing else, I hope to see you next time. Goodbye!